happened in the best of empires, but the others had the good taste to remember they were public servants. It made things run more smoothly. One man, one job, that's how it should be. We can only wait. If he doesn't return, a successor will have to be found. Between ourselves, there is no shortage of candidates. No, but there is a shortage of the right sort. If you excuse me. <laughs> He's offended. Who did the always young? And young people always hang together. Scipio doesn't count, anyhow. <laughs> Going to have been seen in the palace gardens. As you well know, I never think. <laughs> True. Well, I'm not mad. In fact, I've never felt so lucid. What happened to me is very simple. I suddenly felt a desire for the impossible. That's all. Things as they are, in my opinion, are far from satisfactory. Many people share your opinion. That's true. But before... I did not realize it. Now I know this world of ours is quite intolerable. That's why I want the moon or happiness or eternal life, something which is not of this world. That sounded up in theory. Only in practice, one can't carry it through to its conclusion. No, you're wrong then. No, it's precisely because no one dares follow up his ideas to the end that nothing is achieved. 
All that's needed, I should say, is to be logical. Straight through at all costs. I can see what you're thinking. What a fuss over a woman's death, but if that's not it. True enough, I seem to remember a woman died some days ago, a woman whom I love, but love, what is it? A side issue. And I swear to you, her death is not the point. It's nothing more than the symbol of a truth which makes the moon essential to me. A childishly simple, obvious, almost silly truth, but one which is hard to come by and heavy to endure. May I know what this truth is that you've discovered? Men die, and they are not happy. Don't take offense, Caius, if I give you a word of advice. But that can wait. You should have some rest. That's not possible, Helicon. I shall never rest again. But why? If I sleep, who will give me the moon? That's true. I, I hear footsteps and voices. Say nothing, and forget you saw me. I understand. And try to help me from now on. I have no reason not to do so, Caius. <laughs> no one. No. Haven't you seen him? No. But if you'll excuse me, I'll go to lunch. One of the palace guards saw him go by. But our Rome sees Caligula everywhere. Caligula sees nothing but his own idea. Are you thinking of Drusilla? Perhaps. One thing is sure. He loved her. And it's a cruel thing to have someone die today whom only yesterday you were holding in your arms. And you? Oh, I'm the old trusted mistress. That's my role. Sazonia, we must save him. So you too love him? Yes. I shall never forget some of the things he told me. He said that the only mistake one makes in life is to cause others suffering. Oh, he tried to be a just man. He's only a child. The only God I've ever had is my body. And tonight, I pray to this God of mine to bring Caius back to me. We've been looking for you, Caesar. How do you know? So I see. Oh, wait. What do you I mean, want? We were feeling anxious. What business had you to feel anxious? Well, well, as you know, there are points to be settled in regard to the treasury. The, tre the treasury? The treasury! Yes, the treasury's of prime importance, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Yes, we are extremely interested in our treasury. Well, Mucius, let me apply my mind to the treasury. We are going to make a complete and drastic change in our economic system in two moves. The first move is this. Every patrician in the empire who has any capital, small or large, it's all the same thing really, is ordered to disinherit his children and make a new will leaving all his money to the state. But say I have not yet given you leave to speak. As the need arises or when the fancy takes us, we shall have these people die and of course step into their money. Now, the order of their going has no importance from which it follows that all these executions have an equal importance. From which it follows that none has any. Caesar, I wonder if you realize... Do I realize? Do I realize, you fool, if the treasury has prime importance, human life has none. I have resolved to be logical, and I have the power to enforce my will. Presently, you'll see what logic's going to cost you. I shall eliminate contradictors and contradictions. If necessary, I'll begin with you. Caesar, my good will can be relied on. That I swear! And mine too. That I guarantee. I give you three seconds to remove yourselves. One. Two. Three. I can't believe it's you. But it was just a joke, wasn't it? All you said to him? But Caius, um, <laughs> it's impossible. That's the whole point. I don't follow. I repeat, that is the point, Scipio. I am exploiting the impossible. Or rather, it's a question of making the impossible possible. But that game may lead to anything. It's a lunatic's pastime. No, Scipio, it's an emperor's vocation. I have at last come to see the uses of supremacy. It gives impossibilities a run from this day on, so long as life is mine, my freedom has no frontier. I have just heard of your return. I trust your health is all it should be. My health is duly grateful. Leave us, Correa. I don't want to see you. 
Caius, I'm a man. No, the verdict's been given, Correa. This world has no importance. Once a man realizes that, he wins his freedom. And that is why I hate you, Correa, because you are not free. You see in me the one free man in the whole Roman Empire. You should be glad to have at last among you an emperor who points the way to freedom. So leave us, Correa. And you too, Scipio, go for what is friendship now? Go both of you in Rome and spread the news that freedom has been given her at last. And with this gift comes a great probation. Why bring Drusilla into this? Sorry, You Harry. imagine that love is the only thing that can make a man shed tears. Men weep, Sasonia, because the world is all wrong. No. Stay beside Do whatever you want. At my age, one knows that life's a sad business. But why deliberately set out to make it worse? Oh, good. Uh, you can't understand? For what matter? Perhaps I'll find a way out. Oh, all you need, my dear, is a good long sleep. Let yourself relax, and above all, stop thinking. But for that, I have to let myself go, and that's impossible. Oh, so one always thinks when one is overtired. Time comes when one's hand is firm again. Yes, but one must know where to place it, Sonia. What is the use to me of a firm hand, of this amazing power that is mine, if I can't make the sun set in the east, or reduce the sum of suffering in the world, and make an end of death. No, says Sonia, it's all one whether I sleep or keep awake if I have no power to tamper with the scheme of things. Well, that's madness, sheer madness. It's wanting to be a god on earth. So you too think I am mad? No, says Sonia! It is something higher, far above the gods that I am aiming at. Longing for, with all my heart and soul, I am taking over a kingdom where the impossible is king. Well, you can't prevent the sky from being the sky, or a fresh young face from aging, or a man's heart from growing cold. I want, this song, I, I want to drown the sky in the sea. I, I, I want to infuse ugliness with beauty. I want to wring a laugh from pain. There's good and bad, high and low, justice and injustice, and I swear to you that these will never change. And I am resolved to change them. I shall make this world of ours a kingly gift, the gift of equality. And when all is leveled out, and the impossible has come to earth, and the moon is in my hand, then I shall be transfigured and the world renewed, and men will die no more and at last be happy. And love? Surely you won't go back on love. Love? Is so near. I have learned the truth about love. It is nothing, nothing. At last, I am going to live. And living is the opposite of loving, Sasonia. I invite you to the most gorgeous of shows. A feast for gods to gloat on. A whole world called to judgment. But for that, I need a crowd. Spectators, victims, criminals, hundreds and thousands of them. Let the accused. Come forward! I want my criminals and they are all criminals! I want my condemned men! Bring me my public! Judges! Witnesses! Accused! All sentenced to death without a hearing! I will show them something they have never seen before! The one free man in the whole Roman Empire! And you, Sasonia, shall stand beside me! It will be marvelous! Where to stand beside me, Sasonia? And look. 
Caligula? Yes. Caligula! my mind up when he had my father put to death. Well, can you still hesitate? No, we're with you! He's a coward! A bully! A he's, he's impotent! That's his trouble! I <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this about? Where are you going? To the palace! Ah, uh, yes, I can see that. And I can guess why. But do you really think you'll be allowed to enter? If you're not with us, go. But keep your mouth shut. I suspect I'm with you. But make no mistake, not for the same reason. That's enough I am talk. I agree. Let's get down to facts. You're going about this the wrong way. You haven't taken your enemy's measure. That's obvious. You attribute petty motives to him. You'd be better placed to fight Caligula Try to see him as he really is. Oh, we see him how he is! A crazy tyrant! No! We've had experience of mad emperors. This one isn't mad enough. He sets no limit, and he counts mankind and the world we know as nothing. And that's what appalls me in Caligula. To see life drained of meaning. To be told there's no reason for existing. A man can't live without some reason for living. We must act! We must take action, I agree. But cunning is needed to fight down disinterested malice. All I want is to regain some peace of mind in a world which has regained its meaning. And what spurs me on is not ambition, but fear. My very reasonable fear of that inhuman vision in which my life means no more than a speck of dust. Who of us can be deaf to the appeal of our ancestral piety in its hour of danger? Fellow conspirators, will you tolerate a state of things in which patricians are forced to run like slaves beside the emperor's litter? Will you allow them to be addressed as darling and have their wives snatched from them? And their money. No! Correa, your advice <coughs> is good. And you did well to calm our passion. The time is not yet ripe for action. The masses would still be against us. Will you join us in watching for the best moment to strike and strike hard? Yes. And meanwhile, let Caligula follow his vision. And then, at last, the day will come when he finds himself alone, a lonely man in an empire of the dead and kinsmen of the dead. Yes, we were fighting. Really? Might I inquire as to what you were fighting about? About nothing in particular. Ah, then it isn't true. What isn't true? You are not fighting. Have it your own way. We weren't fighting. <laughs> you do better to tidy up the place. Caligula hates untidiness. You'll end by making him do something out of character. I see doing a bit of plotting, weren't we? Really, Caligula doesn't imagine. Caligula doesn't imagine. He knows. 
but I suppose at bottom he rather wants it. Good day, darling. <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. I was on my way to an execution. Thought I'd drop by your place, Korea, for a drink. I've been seized with thirst. <laughs> Lepida, you're looking grumpy. Can it be because I had your youngest son killed? Certainly not, Caius. Quite the contrary. <laughs> Quite the contrary. Excellent. Your face is very sad, but what about your heart? Quite the contrary, isn't that right, Lepida? Quite the contrary, Caesar. Uh-huh. Really, Lepida, there's no one I like better than you. Why don't you tell us a funny story? <laughs> Please. Oh, good, then it's I who'll tell the story. But you'll laugh, won't you, Lepida? If only for the sake of your other son. Besides, you're not in a bad humor, as you said. Quite, quite the... Quite the contrary, Caesar. Splendid. Now, everyone, once upon a time, there was a poor young emperor who nobody loved. He loved Lepida, and to root out of his heart his love for Lepida, he had her youngest son killed. Now that's a funny story. <laughs> but you're not laughing, Lepida. Lepida, I desire you to laugh. In fact, I would like everyone to laugh. Lepida, you shall lead the chorus. Stand up and laugh. Your emperor commands you to laugh. <laughs> I'd like to change the subject now. Perea, you've been very silent. I'm quite ready to speak, Caius, when you give me leave. Good. Then stay silent. <laughs> I'd rather have a word from our friend Mucius. As you will, Caius. Yes, tell us something about your wife. I'll begin by sending her to this place on my right. My wife? But I I'm very fond of her. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. How ordinary of you, Mucius. How unoriginal. Oh, I've just remembered I have some affairs of state to settle. But first, let the imperious desires that nature creates in one have their way. Please, Mucius, won't you pour me out a glass of this excellent wine? And now, Correa, suppose you tell me why you people were fighting just now. Caligula has told me that all true passion has a spice of cruelty. Ah, yes. Caligula has a rare insight into the secret places of the human heart. Really? He should put his ideas into writing. They would be most instructive. And it would keep him busy. It's obvious he needs some means of occupying his leisure. Will you be pleased to know that Caligula shares his goods? He's working on a book, quite a big one, I believe. Mucius, I return your wife. With many thanks. Excuse me, I have orders to give. Yes, this book of his will certainly rank among our Latin classics. Are you listening, Mucius? But I'm afraid there's one thing you won't like quite so much about this book, and that's its title. What is it? Cold Steel. Excuse me, I have urgent public business. Mucius, you are to close the public granaries. <laughs> but sire, famine begins tomorrow. Heaven knows what that might cause. Perhaps a revolution. I repeat, famine begins tomorrow. Do you know that we've been doing quite a lot of work on a little monograph about execution? Give them a sample, Helicon, section three, paragraph one. Execution relieves and liberates. It is universal, tonic, just in precept and in practice. A man dies because he is guilty. A man is guilty because he is Caligula's subject. Now all men are Caligula's subjects, ergo all men are guilty and shall die. It is only a matter of time and patience. <laughs> <laughs> that spit about patience was rather neat, wasn't it? Allow me to tell you, Mucius, that's the quality I admire most in you. Your patience. Gentlemen, Korea doesn't need your presence any longer. You may leave. 
to Sonia, I wish you to stay, and you too, Lepida, and our old friend, Mariah. Tell me, Mariah, what's that you're drinking? It's for my asthma, Caius. <clears throat> no, it's an antidote. You're joking. No, why beat about the bush? You suspect me of trying to poison My you. asthma. You're keeping an eye on me. Go I'm heaven, not to no. be trusted. Caius. If you take an antidote, it follows that you credit me with the intention of poisoning you. Q-E-B. Yes, I mean no. And thinking that I intend to poison you, you take steps to frustrate my plan. That makes two crimes, Mariah, and a dilemma from which you can't escape. Either I have no wish to cause your death, and you are unjustly suspecting me, your emperor, or else I desire your death, and vermin that you are, you attempt to thwart my will. What have you to say for yourself, Mariah? It's sound enough logic, Caius, only oh, it does not apply to the case. A third crime. You take me for a fool! Now listen well, Mariah. Everybody listen well. You shall die nobly. A rebel's death. No, 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 don't thank me, Mariah. It's only natural. <laughs> Here, drink this poison. Don't waste time, Mariah. Please, take it. Come on, it's good. Same thing in the end. A little later. A little sooner. What shall we do? Well, clean up that body to begin with, I should say. It's a rather beastly sight. We must act quickly. You'll need to be 200. Yes. You'd like to kill him? Yes. Why tell me that? Because I fear nobody. Killing him or being killed either way out will do. And anyhow, you won't betray me. That's so, I won't betray you. But I want to tell you something. Or rather, I'd like to speak to what's best in you. What's best in me is my hatred. Oh, please listen carefully to what I'm going to say. It may sound hard to grasp, but it's as clear as daylight, really. It's something that might bring about the one real revolution in this world of ours if people would only take it in. Yes, what is it? Wait. Try to call up a picture of your father's death, of the agony on his face as they were tearing out his tongue. Recall the blood streaming from his mouth and picture his screams like a tortured animal. <laughs> yes? Now, think of Caligula. Yes. Now listen. Try to understand him. Lucio. <coughs> Quite a long time since we saw you last. What have you been up to? R writing some more poems, I Yes, Caesar, I've written some more poems. On what subject? Oh, on nothing in particular. Well, on nature, in a way. A fine theme, and a vast one. Tell me, Scipio, what has nature done for you? Scipio, recite your poem to me, please. 
No, please don't make me do that. Why not? I haven't got it on me. Can't you remember it? No. Anyhow, you can tell me what it's about, Scipio. I spoke of a certain harmony. Between one's feet and the earth? Yes. It's almost that. And it tells of the wavy outline of the Roman hills and the sudden thrill of peace that twilight brings to them. And the cries of swifts winding through the green dusk. Yes. And that fantastic moment when the sky, all flushed with red and gold, swings round to reveal its other side, spangled with stars. But how is it that you I know? wonder. Perhaps the same eternal truths appeal to us both. All I know is that everything I ever think or feel of turns to love. You can't understand. You're single-minded for good, and I'm single-minded for evil. But if you really want my opinion, your poem sounds very good, but... Yes? Oh, that's a bit... anemic. <laughs> you are the fool! You fooled me again! You are playing a trick on me! And now you're fooling on your success! There's truth in what you say. I was playing a part, Scipio. What a fool! What a fool! And how that wickedness must make you suffer! That's enough. How oh, I loathe you! That's and enough. how I pity you! And how terrible of loneliness like yours must be! Loneliness? What do you know of loneliness? Only the loneliness of poets and weaklings. You pray of loneliness, but you don't know that one is never alone. Always we are attended by the same load of the future and the past. Those we have killed are always with us. Those we have loved, those who loved us and we did not love, regrets, desires, bitterness, hatred, sweetness, whores and gods, the celestial gangs. Always, always, always with us. Solitude. If in this loneliness of mine, this ghoul haunted wilderness, I could know but for a moment real solitude, real silence, the throbbing stillness of a tree. Now, Scipio Minus, full of gnashings of hideous with jarring sounds and voices. And when I am with the women I make mine, and darkness falls on us, and I think now that my body's had its full, that I can feel myself, my own, at last, poised between life and death. And my solitude is spoiled by the stale smell of pleasure from the woman sprawling at my side. All men have a secret solace. It helps them to endure. And they turn to it when life has wearied them beyond enduring. Yes, Scipio. If you nothing of the kind in your life, no consolation, no mood that makes the tears well up, no refuge. Yes, Scipio, I have something of the kind. What is it? Scorn. Yeah.
taking place before your eyes by a divine dispensation peculiar to Caligula's hollow brains. The secret of the gods will be revealed to you. I'm Venus today. <laughs> Repeat after me, the litany of Venus called Caligula. O oh, queen, so empty yet so ardent, so inhuman yet so earthly, make us drunk with the wine of your equivalence and surfeit us forever in the brackish darkness of your heart. Make us drunk with the wine of your equivalence. Serpent us forever in the blackest darkness of your heart. Granted, my children, your prayer is heard. <laughs> <laughs> I've merely realized there's only one way of getting even with the gods. All that's needed is to be as cruel as they. All that's needed is to play the tyrant. Tell me, my young friend, exactly what is a tyrant? A blind soul. That's a moot point. I should say a real tyrant is someone who sacrifices an entire nation to his ideal or ambition. But I've no ideal, Scipio. And I've nothing left to covet by way of power or glory. If I use this power of mine, it's to compensate. For what? The hatred and stupidity of the gods. Hatred does not compensate for hatred. Power is no solution. Personally, I know of only one way of countering the hostility of the world we live in. Oh, what is that? Poverty. You must try that too. Meanwhile, many men around you are dying. There's no understanding fate, Scipio, so I choose to play the part of fate. I wear the foolish, unintelligible face of a professional god. That is what those men who were here with you tonight have learned to adore. You may be right, Caius. But I'd rather think that you've done everything humanly possible to raise up against you an army of human gods. Ruthless as yourself, who will burn in blood your godhead of the day! You may go now. I have had enough of you. More than enough, Sipio. I really should paint my toenails. They look so good red. I have no time to wait. Helicon. Yes? Getting on with your task? What task? You know the moon? Yes. Yes. It's a matter of time and patience, but I really must speak to you. I might have patience, only I have not much time, so you must be patient. I said I'd do my utmost. Do you know there's a plot being hatched against you? For the last hour, I've been trying to tell you Mind that. you, I've had her already. Who? The moon. Yes. Yes. Now listen, please. Do you know there's a plot being hatched against your life? It was but last summer. 
I've been gazing at her so long and stroking her so often among the marble pillars in the gardens, but evidently she'd come to understand. It was a cloudless August night. She was coy to begin with. I'd gone to bed. First, she was blood red, low on the horizon. And then she began rising quicker and quicker, growing brighter and brighter all the while. And the higher she grew, the paler she became, until she was like a milky pool in a dark wood rustling with stars. Slowly, shyly, she approached through the warm night air, naked in beauty, light as gossamer. She crossed the threshold of my room, glided to my bed, poured herself into it, and flooded me with her smiles and sheen. Now, will you listen? Please! I learned the danger that's threatening you! All I want, Helicon, is the moon, and you must not return until you have secured her for me. Very well. Now I'll do my duty and tell you what I've learned. There's a plot against you. Correa is the ringleader. Everything you need to know is on this tablet. See? I'll put it here. <coughs> Where are you off to, Helicon? To get the moon for you. Bring Correa to me. Suppose the moon were here, <clears throat> then everything would be different. That was the idea, wasn't it? First the impossible would come to Earth, in a flash the great change come, and all things transfigured. After all, why shouldn't Helicon bring it off? Perhaps one night she'll catch the moon sleeping in a lake and bring her here trapped in a glistening net all slimy with weeds and water like a pale bloated fish drawn from the depths. Why not, Caligula? Why not indeed? Fewer and fewer people around me every day. I, I wonder why. <laughs> Many dead. Many dead. No, even if the moon were mine, I could not retrace my way. Even were those dead men thrilling again under the sun's caress, the murders wouldn't go back underground for that. The murders would... No, Calig logic, Caligula. Follow where logic leads. Power to the uttermost, willfulness without end. I am the only man on earth to know the secret that power can never be complete without a total surrender to the dark impulses of one's destiny. There's no return. You must go on. And on, and on, and on. Until the consummation. Until the consummation. You sent for me, Caius? Yes, Correa. Have you anything particular to tell me? No, Correa. Are you sure you really need my presence? Yeah, absolutely sure, Correa. I'm in the mood for some intelligent conversation. Please. Do you think, Correa, that it's possible for two men of similar temperament and equal pride, if only once in their lives, to be perfectly frank with one another. Yes, Caius, I think it possible. But I don't think you'd be capable of it. Well, you're right there. So let's wear our little masks and muster up our lives, shall we? Tell me, Correa, why don't you like me? Because there's nothing likable about you, Caius. And why do you hate me? There, Caius, you are mistaken. I do not hate you. I cannot hate you because I don't think you are happy. 
Why do you wish to kill me? Because what I want is to live and to be happy. To my mind, neither is possible if one pushes the absurd to a logical conclusion. True, there are moments when, to feel free of them, I desire the death of those I love. Or I hanker after a woman from whom the ties of friendship or family would debar me. Were logic everything, I would kill or fornicate on such occasions. But I believe such passing fancies to have no great importance. If everyone set to satisfying them, the world would be impossible to live in. So, Correa, I, I take it you believe in some higher power. Certainly, I do believe that some actions are, how shall I say, more praiseworthy than others. And I, Correa, believe that all actions are on an equal footing. I know it, Caius. I understand. To a point, I agree with you. But you're a constant menace. You've got to go. You're right. <laughs> Why risk your life in telling me this? Because others will take my place, and because I don't like lying. Correa? Yes, Caius? Do you think it's possible for two men of similar temperament and equal pride, if only once in their lives, to open their hearts to one another? That, I believe, is what we have just been doing. Yes, Correa, but you said I was not capable of it. I was wrong, Caius. I admit it. And I thank you. And now, I await your sentence. My sentence? I see. You know, Correa, what this is. I knew you had it. You knew I had it. So your bit of frankness was all a piece of play acting, so the two friends did not open their hearts to one another. Well, that's no matter, Correa. Listen well. Caius, I would rather go. I'm sick and tired of all these antics. I've had more than enough. Let me go, please. No, stay. This is the only evidence, is that clear? Evidence? I never knew you needed evidence to send a man to his death. That's true. For once, I wish to contradict myself. No one can object to that. I don't follow. You're, you're an ordinary man, Correa. You want to live and, and be happy? That's all. I think, Caius, that we had better leave it at that. Can I go? No. Stay, a little patience, if you don't mind. I will not keep you long. You see this thing, this tablet? This is the only piece of evidence. I choose to assume I cannot sentence you to death without it. That's my idea and my repose. Well, do you see, conspirator? Do you see what becomes of evidence in your emperor's hands? Even the gods cannot restore innocence without first punishing the culprit, but your emperor needs only a torch flame to absolve you and give you a new lease of hope. So carry on, Correa, and follow out the noble precepts we've been hearing here tonight, wherever they may take you. Your emperor awaits his repose. That's his way of living and being happy. Thank you. taught you despair, and to have instilled despair in a young heart is fouler than the foulest crime he has committed up to now. I assure you, that alone would justify me in killing him out of hand. I've been hunting for you high and low, Correa. Caligula's giving a little party here for his personal friends only, and naturally he expects you to attend it. You, my boy, aren't wanted. Off you go! Correa. Yes, Sibio. Try to understand. No, Scipio. Any idea what's happening? 
He's found out about the, the conspiracy. conspiracy. Yes, and? The torture chamber for us all! Oh, enough trifling. Our lives are at stake. Do either of you remember Caligula's favorite remark? Yes. He says to the executioner, kill him slowly so that he can feel what death's like. No, there's a better one. <laughs> After an execution, he yawns and says quite seriously, what I admire most is my imperturbability. <laughs> Do you hear that? That remark betrays a weakness in his character. Would you be kind, so kind as to stop philosophizing? It's something I particularly dislike. That is crazy. I don't want to die. You love me as much as that? Oh, Caesar, there's nothing, nothing I wouldn't sacrifice for you. Oh, this is too much, Cassius, really too much. I don't deserve all this love. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Take her away. Go, my friend. And remember that Caligula has lost his heart to you. Where are they taking me? To your death, of course. Your generous offer was accepted. I feel better already. No! No, I don't want to die! Life, my friend, is something to be cherished. Had you cherished it enough, you would not have gambled it away so rashly. The loser must pay. There's no alternative. Is he ill, Sazonia? No, my pet. But what you don't know is that man never has more than two hours of sleep and spends the best part of the night roaming about the corridors in his palace. Another thing you don't know, and you've never given a thought to, is what may pass in that man's mind in those deadly hours between midnight and sunrise. <laughs> is he ill? No, not ill, unless you invent a name and medicine for the black ulcers that fester in his soul. You're right, Sazonia. We all know oh, yes, you know it! in your fashion. But like all those who have none, you can't divide anyone who has too much soul. Healthy people loathe invalids. Happy people hate the sad. Too much soul. It's what bites you, isn't it? You prefer to label it a disease. That way all the dolts are justified and pleased. 
Ah, uh, I was forgetting. Caligula asked me to impart some news to you. You know, perhaps, that it's a red letter day today, consecrated to art. According to the calendar? No, according to Caligula. He's convoked some poets. He will ask them to improvise a poem on a set theme. And he particularly wants those of you who are poets to take part in the competition. He especially mentioned young Scipio and Metula. But we're not ready. Needless to say, there are prizes. There will be penalties, too. Between ourselves, the penalties won't be so very terrible. The poet's ready? Yes. Bring in the poets. Subject, death. Time limit, one minute. cut short by my whistle. Begin. Oh, death, when upon thy darkling shore I... In their dim cave, the fatal sisters three! Come to me, death beloved! happiness that purifies the heart, skies rippling with light, oh wild sweet bestial joys, frenzy without hope. Stop, please. The others needn't compete. You are very young to understand so well the lessons we can learn from death. I was very young to lose my father. Fall in the rest of you. No, really, a sham poet is too dreadful an affliction. So now the poets are against me. This looks like the end of everything. March out in good order, and as you go past, you are to lick your tablets so as to efface the atrocities you scrawled on them. Go. <laughs> father is doing? No, Kai. All that means nothing now. For now I know, I know that you've made your choice. Leave me in peace! Yes, Caius, you shall have your wish! I am going to leave you. For now I think that I've come to understand you. There's no way out left for us. Neither to you, nor to me, who am like you in so many ways. I shall go away. I shall go very far away and try to discover the meaning of it all. Goodbye, dear Kai. And remember that when all has ended, that I love you. Scipio is gone. I am through with his friendship. But you, I wonder why you are still here. Why? Because you're fond of me. No. 
But I think I might understand if I had you killed. Oh, yes, that would be a solution. Do so, then. Come. Lie down beside me. Put your head on my knee. There, that's better, isn't it? Now rest. How quiet it is here. Quiet? You exaggerate, my darling. You hear these thousands of small sounds all around us? Hatred stalking its prey. Nobody would dare. Yes, stupidity. Stupidity can be murderous, Sonia. All those men I've made a laughing stock of, I've no defense against their wounded vanity. We will defend you. There are many of us left who love you. Fewer every day, it's not surprising. No, they will not kill you. Or if they tried, fire would come down from heaven and blast them before they laid a hand from on you. From heaven? There is no heaven, my poor dear woman. Why, why this sudden access of devotion? It wasn't provided for in our agreement, if I remember correctly. Well, don't you understand? Isn't it enough to see you killing others without my also knowing you'll be killed as well? Enough to feel you hard and cruel, seething with bitterness when I hold you in my arms, to breathe a reek of murder when you lie on me. Day after day, I see all this human in you dying out little by little. You've been with me a long time now, a very long time. Yes, she'll keep me, won't you? I don't know. I only know that if you're still with me, it's because of all those nights we've had together. Nights of fierce, joyless pleasure. Because you alone know me as I am, you remain the last witness. I can't help feeling a shameful tenderness for the old woman that you soon will be. Tell me that you mean to keep me with you. I don't know. All I know is that the shameful tenderness is the one sincere emotion that my life has had up to now. Wouldn't it be better for the last witness of it to disappear? It has no importance. All I know is happy. What you just said is making me very happy. Why can't I share my happiness with you? Who says I'm unhappy? Happiness is kind. It doesn't thrive on bloodshed. Then there must be two kinds of happiness, Sonia. For I am happy. Once I thought I had reached the extremity of pain, but one can go farther, yet beyond the frontier of pain lies a splendid, sterile happiness. You know, it, it makes me laugh when I think how for years and years, all Rome carefully avoided uttering Drusilla's name. But all Rome was mistaken. Love isn't enough for me. I realized it then, and I realize it again today when I look at you. To really love someone, one must be willing to grow old beside that person. That kind of love is right outside my range. Drusilla old would have been far worse than Drusilla dead. Most people imagine that a man suffers because from out of the blue, death snatches away the woman that he loved. But no, his real suffering is less than the eyes of Sonia. It comes with the discovery that grief, too, cannot last. Even grief is vanity. And I know now that nothing, nothing lasts. Think what this world means to Sonia. There have been just two or three of us in history who have achieved this freedom, this, this crazy happiness. Oh, uh, you have seen out the most unusual problems to Sonia. But it is time to turn the cell for you. How bitter it is to know everything. 
and you still have to go through the consummation. You hear the, the sound of weapons? Innocence arming for the fray, and innocence will triumph. Why am I not among them? In that place, I'm afraid. And that's the cruelest of all, after despising others to find oneself as cruel as they. But what matter? Fear too has an end. Fear too has an end. Soon I will achieve that emptiness, that emptiness beyond all understanding, in which the heart has rest, in which the heart has rest. At the moon, if love were enough, all might have been different. But what and where could I quench this thirst? What human heart, what God has for me the depth of a great lake? There's nothing in the world made to my stature, and yet I know.
Everybody give a good round of applause for Shark Quest.